It's not that secret got leaked, it's that many people are doing it, I think. There's only so many quant strategies, too. I think their secret is leverage, to be honest. Yeah, banks do it too. Look up uh, most most of the bank's income statements. Goldman and all these guys, and you see how much money they make market making. Trust me, when, when these guys started their firms, they didn't have the 500 PhDs. Those guys have not, the, the 500 PhDs don't actually add much value to the firm. They look good. The same core structures is still there. Not a whole lot changes. Every firm is a little bit different, but most, most of the firms are a mix of market makers, trend followers, factor investors, kind of linear, linear combination investors, um, and, and then more hard arbitrage like index arb and so forth, ETF arb. Yeah, it's a rough day, rough day. I don't think the alpha's gone, but... I think it's a question of how much... how much leverage do you want to take? Um... Because, yeah, different firms have different tolerance for like magnifying returns, and different banks, <laughs> different banks have a different tolerance as well for how much exposure they'll let you take. That's why Renaissance did the basket options, and basket options were, you know, a pretty pretty big part of their returns. If you can get um, good leverage and good terms, that's you know, your return has to be higher than the cost of the leverage. Um, there is tax reasons and leverage reasons. Remember, they're a domestic fund. Mostly a domestic fund for a long time. LTCM wasn't a money printer. <laughs> but back to sort of the point, Renaissance took a lot of leverage and I think Two, at least two times publicly had almost had a had a run that would shut them down so you might have a sharp that's modest but if you're willing to leverage it yeah, you could still get a pretty nice absolute return. I mean, imagine if I told you you can make, I don't know, 5%. I'm trying to find my mouse here. I guess I could, if I told you you can make, I don't know, 5% a month, and that's the mean. But, you know, the sigma is not a great representation of risk. Let's say the variability is, say, 2%. We say, I'll take this. Or, okay, so. Or, let's sort of, like, let's think about it as choice A. Let me give you choice B is maybe more important. Um, it's a 1% monthly return. Um, but the commensurate ratio. So it's at 0 0.4 percent variability. This is not that outstanding, right? So let's say you levered this to that or even levered this even further. 
the sigma is not, you know, even that important of a metric. I can even lower this to like 0.1%. The problem isn't the, the standard deviation. The problem is that you have to sort of balance it over a distribution of returns. And the distribution has a lot of properties. It's not just sigma. You know, it's also, so let's say these are readings. What are we saying? Most of these readings cluster around one, right? One sigma. So let's argue this, this is kind of what we see. They even shouldn't be on x, y axes, but let's say this is what you see. And then you have one big fat, you know, guy here that you haven't seen yet, but he's lurking. You know, this is kind of the problem with this model. You're just going to have you're going to think this is like reasonably well behaved kind of maybe it's a better, better way to put it these are reasonably well behaved but but you know you don't just don't have enough observations and even if you do you know the actual governing dynamic or first principle of the market is could still be a, a something that evolves for example the amount of quantitative market participants has grown dramatically. The amount of people on this, in the same trades has grown dramatically. So what a lot of these funds don't want to do is lever this up to this or higher. I think there are some firms willing to do that because a 20% drawdown or something like that, even a 30% drawdown is tolerable because they, let's say you don't have outside capital. Let's say you're a true market maker for prop proprietary market maker kind of no hedge fund, no limited partners, just you and your boys, which was the way Susquehanna worked and the way Jane Street worked and all this stuff, then you might say, well, we can survive 30%. You know, in the hedge fund world, you'd say, okay, I can't survive 30%, although some people certainly try. Um, the limited partners will want their money back because I've advertised that I'm a systematic investor that will never, never go wrong. So you might say, I'll take this and maybe, I don't know, 2x lever it or something like that. Um, so anyway, it's uh, there's there's a and you might want you know uh, you know different strategies that sort of take this and do different things with it or you know you have strategies that are, are will actually perform differently when this strategy is doing well. Maybe there's a strategy that is really not correlated that you can also apply. So. They they have stop losses too, but you know they. I think that um, some of these models, most of these models are mean reverting models. Market makers, by definition, mean reverter. Um, so spreads will blow out, and statistical observations will seem rare, and you bet on the spread closing, and the spread gets wider and wider. And the nice thing about not having as much leverage is you can ride it out. But if you have a lot of leverage, you could be down 20 or 30% pretty fast because some of those returns are actually, um, those are all levered already, right? So the market maker algo that I run sometimes is, is like three to one levered already. So leveraging that more to get your target return. Let's say you say, I want to be like Medallion, I want 80% return. Cool, you can do that with anything. You could take your biotech book that you think is going to make 20% this year, Forex lever it. The problem is that you're not as consistent as Medallion, right? A bad month for them is like flat to down small. Bad month for you or me, if you lever that Forex, you'd be out of business. So, or close to it. So you got to find something that's so consistent and if it's so consistent, it's probably not a big effect, right? It's like just like medicine. You know, you might be getting, like I said, 50 basis points, 1%, but it's consistent. And that you take up and lever up. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a more risk averse because of the, the 3,000 3, or so positions you have. 
which provide a bit of a buffer. But the problem is that buffer can be illusory, you know, when everyone has the same 3,000 positions on, because everyone has the same trade on. It's not a great, you know. Yeah, that is right. The, the different carry trades and their different configurations tend to blow people up. You know, FXS, FXCM blew up on the Swiss franc because the Swiss franc never had a 10% move in a day ever, I think. It had a 10% move. The Swiss bank said that they wouldn't peg it or something like that. And then somebody blew up, I think FXCM, some other firms, and it retraced immediately. So, you know, you, no matter how comfortable you feel that your mean reversion will work, it might not. When Quantmare happened, you know, and Taiki Capital blew up and almost took Renaissance down with it and other firms, um, Merck and Pfizer and J&J, &J, like drug stocks I was looking at, were up or down 10 or 20 percent for no reason other than Taiki had to sell them, which made Citadel have to sell them, which made Millennium have to sell them, which made Renaissance have to sell them, you know. And Renaissance took took did, did something that was very rare in the past when they were at the brink, they didn't override the model. This time they overrode the model. Simon said, "Take the cut the positions." And the traders really the, the the people at the firm, the partners, the traders, everybody, they really didn't want to do it because they knew that if we're cutting the positions, we make the spreads blow out further. Um, yeah, I, I don't do any back testing whatsoever. There's an art to it. You could do it, but in this day and age, there's no reason to do it. If you have capital, you just forward test and collect observations, and you can you can uh, go from there. But many people still back test. It's just a matter of doing it the right way. And most people, I would say, it's kind of like a lot of other things in finance. Most people will do themselves more harm back testing than they will do them benefit. So anyway, Quantmare eventually Renaissance recovered, but they were down 20 or 30% in like a couple days. Maybe a week or two, I forgot. And their precious track record, which, you know, I'm, I'm look, I love that firm. But their, their precious track record could have very well... Wait, what just happened to my... Uh, what the fuck? Don't tell me. They did the impossible. Oh, they did the impossible. Fuck these guys, man.